you're Rana, and welcome to FM Tahiti. I hope you're all doing well. I kind of feel like this episode should have some kind of like funeral dirge playing in the background, um, because it's the end end of the road, I think, for FM 19. So I'm recording this on the 22nd of October, so that's the day after the Football Manager 2020 um, live stream that they did on Twitch. So I managed to watch a little bit of that. Uh, my wife was kind enough to let me put it on the big screen downstairs. Um, and watched it for a bit, but in terms of this save, we've not got many other places to kind of go. Really, we've just finished the World Cup. It's going to be a week or two before the bit comes out, which probably isn't enough time to to finish that much, and it's going to take a long time to kind of improve the Tahiti side to make more headway at World Cup. And it's going to take a while, I think, for the wings to be you know, built up enough that they can actually make a, an impact. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a few history bits, a few players, just do a bit of a summary of where everything is, kind of league-wise, sort of you know, most successful clubs and things like that, stadium sizes, and then I'm going to retire my managers. And then in the next episode, I'm just going to show you what it looks like in 50 years' time or... Well, not 50 years time, 50 years from the point of the save starting. So it'll be like 2069, 2068, something like that. Uh, so about another 30, 40 years on uh, from this. So yeah, let's have a look then. So with the Tertengegi wings, we took over them uh, when they were reasonably low down. So we took over them here. Well, just we took over them technically, I guess, here. Um, Got them promoted from the gold into the championship, got promoted again, and then have spent the last three seasons sort of fourth, fifth, and fourth again. So we've stabilised as a, a top top table side. But if you look at our honours, our honours are actually pretty sparse. Even though we've got some good players like Paul Manuel, We've not had a huge amount in the way of actual honours, but we have come very close. Uh, is it in landmarks competitions? There we go, competitions. So we were runners up to the OCL in 2028. It was a good season. Um, we were runners up to the Mutineer Pro Trophy four times. So we won it once, but we were runners up four more times. So we could have. Um, had a few more trophies if we'd won this, which then opened up the Shield of Pride for us as well, where we could have won a few of those trophies, but trophy light, but this was one of the teams that had been, if we go back, from the very start in the gold, they'd never been above that until we got there, so we've moved them up. We're financially insecure, look at this. It's terrible, isn't it? Not in a great place financially. Um, never have been, to be fair, so we've no youth intake. This is one of the reasons pushing me towards um, just sort of preparing and getting things ready for the next um, what's the next season for the next football manager because we can't really turn this around without more success domestically and we're going to struggle domestically. The gap's getting a bit too big now at least for the amount of time we've got left. Because I am pretty pumped for FM20. It looks pretty good from what I could see. So it's and the thing is, if I was closer to making some kind of headway in this, I probably would carry on for a bit, but it's not to be. So yeah, financially, some issues. Um, Facilities-wise, you can see no youth, no data, basic training, average corporate, for some reason, that must be because of the stadium. And we now have 5,387 all-seater, which they have not named after me, unfortunately. Uh, I'm only favoured personnel, although Jean-Baptiste Moreau, and Kalai have made it up into the icons. Phil Lamb there as well as a favoured personnel. So we've had a reasonable um, experience here at the Totengegi Wings. If we look at the squad as well before we move on, we've got a few players that we've had. Let's well just do a quick kind of move through. Ahmed Smith we had when he was with us at the Humpbacks. So you can see that actually almost 200 league appearances or senior appearances 250 conceded and only 65 clean sheets so not amazing but he was always reasonably solid Stuart Spearling was I think our very first youth yeah our very first youth golden generation one to watch 
Got 232 senior appearances, 30 goals, 37 assists, 12 minute matches, an average of just over 7 all the way through. He played a lot for us at the humpbacks, then we managed to get him for the wings, he's been ever present for us as well. He's probably racked up almost as many here at the wings as he would have he would have carried on if we carried on getting a reasonable amount there. But his attributes he's never looked I say he's never looked amazing. He looked amazing when he came through, but he's this is as far as he's got because of the I guess the issue with just training and the facilities, but 76 caps, not bad. He's he's done all right for himself. Tamangara, legend. I love Tamangara, or six foot whatever of him. Where's his, where's his height being hidden? Oh, there he is. Six foot six. Monster is Tamangara. It's only worth £875. He doesn't look anything special. He did not have a good season. Um, for us. But if we look at his kind of it's 58 goals in 160 appearances. So we actually got him for the humpbacks from Tupapa. Uh, I think we signed him on a pre-contract. I think he might be alright. He came along and he scored the winning goal for us to get our first title with the humpbacks. Right at the end. Amazing player. Absolutely amazing. Just the target man we needed. Uh, ben Thomas, left back from the Humpbacks, never really made it. Oh no, not from the Humpbacks. I always assumed he was at the Humpbacks. But no, Noruta. Bit a liar. He's been alright, good backup. Oh. Twig was from the Humpbacks. Utility player. It's like 150 appearances for a utility player. Uh, Yonic Vigler, we signed um, this season. And he got 15 league goals for us. More pair and then Chance and Tetero. He never really hit the big time until he got to us, but he had a really good season. Uh, Bilal Delabel was a youth player who never really got uh, involved too much. I think it's what, two? Yeah, two and two. Logan Frey being ever present on the right for us with the wings, being a bit of a mainstay. No international caps for him. Got Calistine Halafuko, who's a recent ish um, acquisition who had been previously at the Humpbacks, but not when we were there. Daniel Holt, another Humpbacks youth uh, product. He could be good in the future. Diego Kaiser, kind of youth player we got through from, well, Papi and then Maria. Been all right. Manuel Kalai is an icon now for the wings. Uh, with his sort of 25 goals in 42 appearances. He's had a couple of good seasons, to be fair. I don't know if that counts as an icon. I think I should be the icon, not him. Uh, Ian Kapu was all right. Special. Uh, Dave Kerr, who was from the Humpbacks, so always, always threatened to impress, but never quite made it. Like, for the under-23s, he scored tons of goals. So in the development gold, he's banging them in. Look at that, 70 goals and 83 appearances. Um, 16 and 71 for his the senior appearances, but never quite made it. Uh, Phil Lamb, absolute monster. The Humpbacks is with the Humpbacks from the very start. Got almost 250 league appearances. Uh, got a few goals, a few assists, but he's been... I had many seasons where he's had much of a rest. Left or right, always been present. Manuel, again, from the humpbacks originally, and we learned him out, and we learned him out to Taha, where he won his first OCL winner's medal, came back to us, of where we won the OCL and got another medal. Um, so if you look at his, his milestone landmarks, so look at this, he's won a lot. OCL, Super Cups, UCL Pride, Talent Gold is one, Youth Cup is one, um, Atoll Championship is one at one point as well. The only thing he didn't win was the Premiership Championship. No, he won the Championship with us. The Premiership he didn't win. That's the one he missed out on. But a good, a good player. His attributes again don't look like he's, he's that good. But look at this. Not bad over here. 213 league appearances, 46 goals. 
Jean-Baptiste Moreau kind of got him his cover. He's arguably a good icon. He always outperforms this. His attributes here. Was it Magenta? Marquesa Islands beforehand. Never overly impressive, but always solid. Uh, Marino as a youth player has not really had much to do with us. Joyce Renard is the future on the left. Lots of people coming in, putting in really big bids, like hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of bids uh, for him. So I imagine he will leave not long after we leave. Um, not done a great deal, but he's being eased in. Sabu is all right. What to say about him? Two Martin attributes are okay, played okay, and that's our kind of team, really. If we go and look at the humpbacks, so there are a couple of things. Like so, player-wise, there aren't many players here that we left. So, this is Dalloway we signed for them. Three hundred fifty thousand he's worth now. A lot of appearances, a lot of goals and assists. 30 now, but 64 caps. Then go to £1,600. That's two thirds of our budget when we started the game. He's currently on. Luca Barr, we signed for the Humpbacks before we left. He's doing well. 216 appearances, 121 league goals spread across Uapoa and Rura 2. 71 caps, 34 goals. Pretty good. But then there's been lots of players that they had they got rid of. Uh, so we'll find a few uh, names here. So Beauvalet, we got, he's gone after Huheen Islanders. 30 as well. 191 appearances. So he's quite a good player. Um, we know most of these. Dave O'Keefe. Uh, he came to us eventually at one point. He started off the kind of partnership with Tamangaro, but it wasn't to last with the Humpbacks. Eric de Freitas, a player we always tried to get, and he, we didn't, but he ended up with the Humpbacks anyway. He, was, he looked like he was going to be the missing piece of our jigsaw, but then we moved. Uh, Michael Wallace. So he was one part of WAG, Wallace and Gerard. Um he used to play for us, the Wings, before we released him. 74 goals, 26 experiences, not terrible, just not massively prolific. Oh man, what else there is when we, we moved him on? Salaberry was a one of our first defenders we bought. 160 pounds, big outlay. Had a, a reasonable varied career, but now he's a scout. All right, he's making his mark. Joe Jansen was our left back. He is now retired. See? Yeah, this is a retired thing. It's, it's not. He's done, there's no like staff stuff. But he did alright. But you see one of the ones we started off with, he wasn't ever amazing compared to some of the players we later got, but Zach Henderson was our original target man. Fifteen goals. Uh he didn't have a, a particularly lengthy career, did he? Three seasons with us. Seasons with Terra he. Bit of overlap, so he been on loan, I think we set him off at. Yeah, not amazing. But he was one of the Originals. Hamish Bennett was our original keeper that we, I say, we got rid of. He was stolen from us, whether we wanted to or not. And away he's gone. Quite a varied career as well. That's it. If we go through the transfers as well, Semi Gerard. Oh, so we know from the World Cup, he's still potentially doing the business. Well, he didn't make it into the World Cup squad, did he? But he was almost there. Um, 250 appearances, 137 goals. This is just league goals, remember? So his attributes were good, but were they never fantastic. Six of five, though. He was just a goal machine. You could rely on him. He pushed us up the table quite quickly, quite early. In some of these seasons as well. 
So it says 15, but actually got 33, 24, 23, 21, 36. So he's huge more, a huge number of goals, much more than that for the league goals. We got him for free from AS Chance. You wouldn't get that going in again. And then we had Yannick Janin, one of my favourite players. 30, we took him to the World Cup. 29 caps, 10 goals. He had a bit of a lean period where he kind of wasn't in the national side. He'd have had more if we'd been managing for longer. 269 appearances, 170 goals. And he's gone for a little bit of money, but not much considering how good he was. And again, it's, it's a bit like Gerard. When you look at how many scored, so 19, 33, 28, 54 that season, 54 goals. No, 25, 54. 14, 13, blah, blah, blah. So when we left and he moved on, he had a slightly leaner period, but amazing player. He's got an amazing overhead kick. So those are the main kind of players. We've got Johan Andre as well, who's ended up at Al Fateh, who is an amazing player. He is easily the best player produced from our leagues. Without a doubt, even though he's playing in a league that's not active, he's like, still got 90 appearances, 10 goals, but 237 appearances, 40 goals. We had him since he was about 15, 16, and never a massive goal scorer, but just the attributes. Easily get into big side. Paul Pons, we managed to get in as well. He's ended off going off to um, Saudi Arabia as well, so Al Rayad. 187 appearances. Actually, he still look particularly good now, but he was. I think he won at one point. Oh, Footballer of the Year runner up. So, this is the Oceana Football the Year runner up. Football of the Year. There we go. See, actually, Johan Andres won it as well. The Paul Pons, you know, and Andrea are our kind of contributions. This is the Oceanic one, so New Zealand basically winning it until we produced a couple of players. So there we go, really. And if we want to look at our profile, here we are. This is what we look at. Like our attributes haven't increased a huge amount because actually, when we look at the blah de blah, when we look at our actual qualifications, we're only in Continental B. I'm pretty sure there are there are courses above this. Still, we just never had the money to um, go for them. Good at motivating, good at man management, apparently. You know, our youngsters and players were determined. Not very adaptable, but then we have only managed in Polynesia. That was never going to go up. Um, generally okay. Not very hands-on, apparently. Only 1% hands-on. Not quite sure what that might be. I did go on holiday during summer sometimes, once I'd done all my business. But never mind. Career stats, we've played 488 games. We have won 314 of those. Only lost 106. Over 1,100 goals. Our win percentage is 64%. Overall, that's not bad. If you look at our career milestones, manager of the of this, we've won enough, haven't we? Runner up for the championship, won the Mutiny of Pride Trophy. We won the Inter Island Cup. I don't even remember winning that. I thought that was the one we'd never won, but actually, no, we won that one. Um, Beating here again. Shield of Pride, Premiership, Super Cup, um, OCL, Atoll Championship, Gold Championship. We basically won, we won the World Cup qualifying section as well. We won pretty much everything we've been in at some point some point or other we have won a certain amount. So won the Atoll Championship with Marquesa, won it again with the Austral Islands, got to the World Cup with Tahiti. And again, there's a bit of a, a disparity between the two, but we've won pretty much everything we've been in for. There are cups we've not won just because they're not ones we were ever eligible for, like the Winwood and Leeward Isle trophies, the other kind of regional cups that other teams play in, because we didn't manage a team playing in it. We were never able to, to win it. We didn't obviously win the World Cup. Um, we never played in the Oceania Nations either, uh, which we could have done if we'd stuck around for long enough. Or the Confederations Cup, which we could have 
technically been eligible for, but that's not a bad kind of haul, is it? There we go. There's the biography. Been there a while. So all that's left to do, oh, we've been Championship Manager of the Year, runner-up, and one Polynesian Manager of the Year. Yeah, he's been honoured in that sense as well. What else do we need to look at? Relationships. Distant with Moses Malafu. Who's this? Yeah. It's a very close place. Lots of the ones with Yanin, Gerard, McIntyre, Dalloin. Yeah. yeah. Job history. See all the trophies out there. You can see the, the good times down here and then slightly leaner. I think all that remains to be done is retire. See what happens. Sad times. Nothing happens. That's it, we can't see anything. I thought we'd get to see the kind of resign bit. I should have resigned and then retired, shouldn't I? Never mind, it was just a biography. That's all you'd get. It's just a biography. Um, so there we go. We'll come back for the next... Uh, episode where I'll go through and do the holiday thing. I'll have to probably put the manager back in for that one. But thank you all for watching this. It's been a bit of a ramble, just finishing off the series, really. But I do appreciate you watching, commenting, uh, watching along. We managed to get through quite a few seasons that so didn't have to holiday too much. It looks like I have holidayed a lot, but that's because uh, we've had some months where nothing happens and summer months where I've got all the business done. So the first few seasons, there wasn't anything for me to do for a couple of months because the players were away and there's no one to sign and then we had a few seasons i think where because of the way the calendar worked is it march or may one of those months nothing happens unless you're in a cup quite often we've not been in a cup and then we've had the international stuff so we've got quite far and it's 2030 started when it was 2018 uh, it's a reasonable amount of seasons that we've managed to get through because uh, we're starting in February. So thank you for sticking with me through these, commenting, liking, watching, subscribing, hopefully. Um, I might do a quick video about what we're going to do next. That FM20, but probably not. But thanks very much. Next episode will be the kind of 50-year recap. Mm -hmm.